We are Californios. This is our land. Eyewitness to history, December 6th, 1846. Welcome to Eyewitness History. It is nearly dawn on the 6th of December in the year 1846. My name is Walter Cronkentite, and I will be your anchor man for this morning's dramatic Eyewitness Report. It is a frigid morning. We're on a hillside overlooking the San Pasqual Valley in Alta, California about 20 miles east of the Pueblo called San Diego. Numerous reports of an imminent battle between the United States Army of the West, led by General Stephen Watts Kearney, and a militant group of Californios, led by Andres Pico, brother of the governor of California, Pio Pico, have just reached us. Although the scene just below us is peaceful and quite bucolic at the moment, well-informed observers of this far-flung corner of the Mexican War assure us that armed conflict is about to commence. Two of those observers are with us today, one from each side of this eminent battle. Hailing from the state of Pennsylvania, a dragoon in the U.S. Army of the West, Amos Alondos Alonzo Anderson. And from Santa Isabel, a short distance south of our present position, Senor Ricardo Guimon de la Batista, until recently an active duty volunteer member of the very band of California fighters we expect to soon see on the battlefield before us. Gentlemen, would you kindly introduce yourselves? I'm here on the here. protest! My I should be with serious. my regiment! Hold on, gentlemen, one at a time, please. <laughs> Sergeant Anderson, you are the elder. Would you go first? Thank you, Mr. Krakentuch. As I was saying, I really should not be here. Why are you on this hillside instead of with your regiment on the field? It ain't fair, that's why. <laughs> Last night I heard a noise. An enemy soldier, I thought, sneaking to our camp. So I quiet like, get out of my bedroll, and do a quick and quiet inspection of the camp. As I was tippy-toeing through the darkness, I accidentally skeered a whole family of skunks. <laughs> that had come into our camp looking for something to eat. They turned tail and drenched me. <laughs> Since then, nobody in the regiment will let me anywhere near them. <laughs> so here I am till the scent wears off. I told you it ain't fair, dang it. A skunk? I thought I smelled something. <laughs> I need it with my brothers in arms. We dragoons of the U.S. Army of the West have been marching for months to get this far. Our mission is to secure the American territory of California. We're on our way to a place called San Diego, but it looks like we have to rough up a band of Mexicans here first. Senior skunk, we are not Mexicans. <laughs> not anymore. We are Californios. Like I said, Mexican skunks. But General Carney also said the British and the French are sticking their noses in California. We started at Fort Leavenworth in Kansas Territory. It has been a dang hard haul across deserts and mountains and engines and such. Now this damn rain and cold. And skunks. <laughs> we were told California was sunny in the winter. Heck, we started out 1,700 strong. We're down to 140. Crossing the desert back there, it got so bad we had to eat one of our own horses and a mule just to keep going. That give you an idea how bad it was? In fact, the U.S. Army of the West, according to reliable reports, suffered severe deprivation on its long march from Kansas Territory. 1,400 of the original contingent were ordered back to Leavenworth from Santa Fe because General Kearney had reason to expect an easy victory in California. 
And we understand Kit Carson has joined your force, Sergeant Anderson. Is that true? Sure is. He and his group was heading west to Washington from Los Angeles last August. We ran into him near Sorocco in the Rio Grande Valley in New Mexico. He told the general that California was already retaken by us Americans. Yep, the stars and stripes are already flying over every town. Kit Carson said so. So the general sent even more men back to Leavenworth. Oh. He headed west from Socorro with just 140 dragoons plus some others, including Kit Carson and his men. Senor de la Batista, would you please introduce yourself? I too do not belong here. I was ordered to remain off the field of battle today because of minor injury to my left leg. It is not so serious. I should be there with my compadres. If you are not really soldiers, who ordered you off the field of battle today? Your leader, Andres Pico? No, it was Pico's little sister, my mother. <laughs> she appealed to him and he could not say no. I'm so embarrassed, but what can I do? His mother! Your mother! Even so, senor, here you are. Uh, won't you tell us about yourself and your purpose here? If you aren't Mexican, what are you doing in the Mexican War? Of course, I am a Spanish descent. I am the son of Don Diego de la Baptista. My family owns a Rancho del Cielo just south of here. We are cattlemen. We have been here for generations. A bunch of cowboys? If the foolish Americans insist on battle today, they will get one. We will crush you. We will defend our homeland. Not Mexico, California. It is true we are not soldiers. We are all ranchers defending our homes, our families, our livestock. But we know what the gringos want, our horses. But we are ready for battle, even if we, we are not official soldiers. We are 75 strong, all of us expert horsemen, under the leadership of none other than Andres Pico. I have no doubt we will prevail. Every man of us is armed, firearms as well as iron-tipped lances. We are much more than we may appear, Senor Kraken Tight. Much more. Yes, I am sure that is true. Uh, but there is one thing I do not understand. You say you are not fighting on the side of Mexico. Por supuesto no. The government of Mexico is incompetent and corrupt. We tolerate it no longer. We are Californios. This is our land. Thank you for your comments, Senor de la Batista. And now, we see the first light of dawn is glimmering. If there is going to be a battle today, it may very well soon begin. Oh, we know well what the gringo is planning. We have been observing them for days. Ridiculous! Senor, I am not bluffing you. Your reconnaissance team was very clumsy. We have even recovered a blanket marked U.S. Army. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen, but is that the sound of horse hooves we're hearing? Could this battle be about to begin? Why, yes, here comes the U.S. Army out of the West. That first group there is under the command of Captain Moore. He's supposed to lead the charge. And my compadres are there on the valley floor waiting for you. You cannot see us because of the mist. Our lances are in hand, I can tell you. Every gun is primed. Descending the hillside in two columns, the U.S. Army of the West, armed with sabers and carbines, is now reaching the valley floor. Look at that! Moore isn't leading the charge. That's Captain Johnson in front. And right next to him is General Carney and Kit Carson. About a dozen dragoons. Behind them, there's Captain Moore with maybe 50 more dragoons. Look at that! They're charging! Yes. They are charging directly into our plan. There now, a shot, and your Captain Johnson is down. We are trained, you see, to shoot one shot, then the lance. The Californios are spreading out now, but we keep coming onto the valley floor. We sure got you outnumbered, senor. But why the heck ain't we shooting back? What the? They're using their carbines as clubs. Perhaps they allowed their cartridges to get wet and swollen last night, senor very unprofessional. The first wave of Americans is now on the valley floor. Uh, this battle is rapidly reaching its full scale. On the one flank, it looks like several Californians have been flushed out. Yes, I recognize Pablo Bajar. He's Pico's lieutenant. Take him prisoner! How'd you like that, Greenhorn? 
Yes, that is the heart. The battle is spreading out now, covering the entire floor of the valley. Pico is taking his men west. Their mounts clearly fresher than those of the U.S. forces. Well, they stop now, uh, perhaps a mile to the west. Aha! Uh -huh. Here come our howitzers. About time. But they are stopped. That mule is spooked. He has frozen. Two Californios are on them. The dragoon is trying to hide beneath the gun limber. Not for long. My compadres have lanced them 20 times by now. He is down. That Californio just shot the mule and they're hauling the gun away. With their lariats, so much for your artillery. And see, your soldiers are looking pretty ragged. What's wrong with your horses? They seem worn out. They are worn out, and so are the men. We are chasing after them, isolating them, separating them, precisely as we planned. Our lances are much superior to the American sabers. Look, their Americans no longer have contacts with their leaders. Here come the Marines! <laughs> Marine Lieutenant Gillespie, he's not worn out. He and his men just come to us from San Diego, sent by the Navy commander there. They are charging from the opposite end of the valley. Indeed, the contingent of Marines led by Gillespie are attempting to rally the flagging soldiers. Uh, they're charging from the opposite end of the valley. Uh, Gillespie is yelling, rally men, for God's sake, rally, face them, face them. We were told you Californios would turn tail and run when we attacked. <laughs> oh, look, Carson is down. No, he's not. He's okay, but he has no horse. See him? He's the one with the sandy colored hair. The Californios are not running. They are dominating. They are fighting like well-drilled regulars. I should be there with them. There's Captain Moore. He's face to face with Pico. He's aiming to shoot him. No, now his saber is raised. Oh no, two Californios are lancing him. He's down off his mount. Now another Californio is shoots him as he lay on the ground. Now Captain Hammond is rushing in to try to save him. But he's overtaken by Californios. Hammond is down. Saber broke as he fell to the ground. He looks dead too. My, co my comrades are after the Marine Captain Gillespie. I'm sure they recognize him from the recent battle in Los Angeles. Yes, I hear them. Here's Gillespie, men. Get him! Gillespie is trying to break through the Californios. A California lance just caught him on the collar. He's going down. He's rolling on the ground, trying to evade the Californios who are just clustering around him. Looks like he's just taken a lance to his back and now another to his mouth. The Californios are stumbling over each other as they try to attack him. My God, he has escaped. He's running away as my comrades crowd around him trying to finish him off. It's a miracle. Gillespie has escaped them. I can't even see him now. They can't neither by the looks of them. Dragoons and Gillespie's men from San Diego are now scattered all across the battlefield. Individual battles, mano a mano, you might say, are now taking place all over the battlefield. Yes, and the Californios are winning them, mano a mano. Your sabers, old man, and your, and your carbine clubs are no match for us. And our horses and horsemen completely outclass your mules. This is completely one-sided. Well, hold on a moment. Uh, something's changing. Inexplicably, uh, Pico seems to be ordering his Californios away from the battle to the west of the valley. Why? Because even more dragoons have reached the valley floor, and they're bringing at least two cannons with them. I was wondering where those big guns were. Heck, you can't imagine what a chore it was getting them all the way from Fort Leavenworth. But they're certainly worth it today. The Americans now, as if taking a cue from the Californios, retrench to the east. They're moving to the opposite side of the valley. They're forming a fortified camp around the wounded. I see 16, 17, 18 dead so far, all laid out and covered. Doc Griffin is working on the wounded. I see some dragoons making sleds of willow and buffalo ropes, probably to drag the wounded to safety. It is a glorious victory for us Californios. Nobody k killed and I cannot see anybody wounded either. I wouldn't call it a victory if I was you. Your Californios skedaddled from the field of battle as soon as they saw our superior firepower. Looks like a victory for the United States of America to me. Ridiculous. 
You can see the outcome for yourself. 18 dead by your own count. And so many wounded. Don't be silly, you upstart! You evidently don't know nothing about professional soldiering. Is that right? Well, in my unprofessional opinion, you just got skunked. Again. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, it, it cannot be denied that the Americans suffered a severe beating at the hands of the surprisingly disciplined and agile group of California volunteers. But it also cannot be denied that the Californios retreated from the field of battle. Who won, who lost, that decision is now in your hands. This concludes our live action report. Eyewitness to History, December 6th, 1846. This is Walter Krakenzeit reporting to you from the San Pasquale Valley of Alta California, December 6th, 1846. Join us again at 1.45 for an update on Eyewitness to History.